Hi, thanks for joining me. This is Angie at Chicken Scratch. I have another sew-in project for you today. We're making this fabric basket, and this is very different from the previous fabric basket that we made. Uh, the other one used two long pieces of fabric. This one's using a layer cake, and we're using four squares that we're gonna be trimming down, okay? What this does is it allows the images to be right side up. For example, if this was one long continuous piece of fabric, our trees would be upside down over there, okay? So I'm gonna show you all the steps in the video. This is using nine by 10 pieces of fabric. And this is just using the regular 10 by 10 layer cake. So if you didn't wanna do any cutting, this is, it's just gonna be an inch bigger. I just, for some reason, like the little shorter ones. You can also fold the top down if you prefer or leave it straight up. Okay, I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks a lot. Okay, so we're gonna be using four layer cakes to make our basket today. We've got two of this pattern, and then we've got two of this pattern, okay? We're gonna also be using some fusible fleece, which we will measure that in a little bit, and we wanna use coordinating thread. I'm using RFL 2600, it's a gray. Uh, you'll see that in just a minute when we're sewing. Okay, so now we're going to cut an inch off of all four pieces, and we're gonna cut an inch off of, at either the top or the bottom, so it depends on your pattern. I can tell if I take an inch off of here, the uh, antlers are gonna get covered up when we fold the basket down. So we're gonna take the, these two pieces, and we're going to trim one inch off the bottom. Now, while I'm cutting this, I'm gonna go ahead and say, you don't have to cut this. You can actually make this basket without cutting it, but I prefer the nine by 10 size. Now we're gonna do the same thing to the back fabric. So I'm gonna move this over. We're just trimming off one inch. Okay, this is the inside fabric. This is the outside. I'm gonna take my label and add that now. I'm gonna use my Sue Daily, I don't know, I think it's called a glue pen. So I'm gonna add this here, and I'm gonna glue down this side, just to prevent any shifting. If you don't use a label, then this you can skip this step. I do get these labels from the Dutch label shop. Okay, so now I'm gonna fold that over. And I wanna make sure that I'm only pinning it to the front fabric. Okay, so now we're gonna place these right sides together and we are only going to sew the bottom right now, okay? So I'm going to turn it this direction, line it up, and then I'm gonna take my clips and that's what we're gonna sew. I'm gonna do the exact same thing to the inside fabric, turn them right sides together, just stitch the bottom. So I'm gonna take my clips again, and now we're gonna to go to the sewing machine, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna line this up to the outside edge of the foot, and this is foot number one on my Bernina, okay? Okay, so we've just sewn these pieces together. And now what we wanna do is press our seams. 
So this is the inside fabric, and this is the outside fabric, okay? So let me get the iron. Okay. Technically, it will be best if you press these seams open. So that it won't be so bulky on the bottom, okay? There's that one. And now this one. Okay, so now we are ready for the fusible fleece. So for this basket, we're actually going to apply the fusible fleece to the outside. So I have a piece here, but I can tell it's too short. Uh, so what you wanna do is take your tape measure and measure it from here to here, from here to here. So I'm gonna do that now. Okay, so uh, lengthwise, it is 17 and 3 eighths. And I tell you to measure this after you've sewn them together because if your seam, if you're sewing at a quarter inch, this is going to be a different measurement. If you're sewing at a half an inch, it's going to be a different measurement. I use the side of my presser foot to gauge where I'm sewing. So whatever your method is, that's why I'm saying measure this after you've sewn them together. And if you weren't consistent, your back fabric might be a little bit might be a different size. So for this one, it's gonna be 17 and 3 eighths, but don't use that measurement without measuring your own because it could be a little off, okay? Now I'm gonna measure the width and it is 10 inches, give or take. So 17 and 3 eighths by 10 is what size I need my fusible fleece. So I will go cut that and I will be right back. Okay, so here is my fusible fleece that I have cut. And then here is my front fabric. So I'm gonna place it on there. And then I'm gonna take my iron and start in the middle and then work out. Now, when you're using the fusible fleece, uh, I would suggest that you turn the steam off on your iron, um, yeah, so turn it, turn the steam off. And then you're going to press out. And if your fusible fleece is a little bit shy of the measurement of the front fabric, that's okay too. You don't want it larger. It will get on your iron. Ask me how I know that. <laughs> okay, now I'm just gonna turn it over for a second. And depending on what kind of iron you have, uh, you can press this on the back side too. All irons are not created equal, so. I'm just gonna say that. I do really like this little travel iron. It's perfect for filming videos. I will say though that I don't use it uh, all the time when I'm quilting because I have the smart iron, but this one is perfect for filming. It's small, it doesn't take a, a lot of space up, and it's nice and hot. Okay, so we just pressed the fusible fleece on, and what you're gonna do now is fold this in half and I want to make sure that the top is straight, so I'm gonna pin the top first, and then I will pin the left and the right, okay? So, you can use pins if you prefer. I'm gonna use a clip anytime I can uh, so that I don't accidentally poke myself. But pins work too for <laughs> whatever you prefer, I should say. Okay, that one's done. 
Now we're gonna do the back, or the inside fabric, I should say. I don't know why I say the back. This is the inside fabric. And I'm gonna pin. And you don't have to worry too much about pinning uh, the inside fabric. But the most important part is, let me back up a second, is you want to mark where you want to leave your opening so that you can turn the basket right uh, right side out. And we're gonna be trimming off a half an inch on the end. So you wanna make sure that you put your opening not at the top of the basket where they could see your where you stitched it, and not at the bottom where we're gonna be cutting. So ideally you want it right smack dab in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is take a pen and mark where I want that opening to be left. So right about there. So I'm gonna leave an opening like that, okay? And then I'm just gonna pin this again. So now what we're gonna do, this is the top, this is the left, this is the right. We're gonna stitch down both sides only and the same thing on the front fabric, okay? Don't forget to leave your opening so that you can turn the baskets right side out, or the basket right side out. Okay, so I'm gonna start back right about there. Okay, so we've just sewn the left and the right together on both the inside fabric and the front fabric. Before we go any further, we wanna make sure that we caught the label. If we did not catch the label, then we can put it back on the sewing machine and sew it. <laughs> okay, so I can, yep. I almost cut off the C, but it's there, so it looks good. Okay, so our next step is go ahead and take these pins out before we poke ourselves. And you can use a rotary cutter, you can use scissors, whatever floats your boat. Um, you can use a marker, um, you can measure one and a half inches and use your marker. What I really like doing is using a piece of paper that I cut with a one and a half inch punch. And I'm just gonna place it down here at the bottom and I'm going to pin it and then cut it out. So, and this step doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's, yeah, y'all will hear me say that a lot. I say it even paper crafting, sewing and paper crafting. So I'm gonna take my fabric cutting scissors and I'm just going to, of course I used a pen that was huge. Ideally you'd use a smaller one. So I'm gonna remove this one and a half inches. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here on this side. So pin it and then cut it out. <laughs> Use a smaller pin. We're done with that one. So now let's do the front fabric, okay? I know most people use a rotary cutter and use their erasable um, pen. And I do that sometimes, but I think this is easier, technically. It may not be as precise. Okay, so now we're done cutting those corners on the bottom of our bag, our basket. And now what we're gonna do is, let me open this up just like this, and we are going to um, pin this 
You can use your clips, but they won't fit under my presser foot. So I'm going to use a pen, even though I prefer the clips. Um, somebody needs to make us some smaller clips, right? So I'm going to pin this, and then I'm going to take it to my machine, and I'm going to sew straight across there. So I'm going to do this on both uh, the front and the lining of our basket. Okay, they line up pretty well. Now this one, so the same thing for the lining. Okay, I've got both of these pinned. We are ready to go to the sewing machine, okay? Okay, so. Now you can see this is not straight, probably as a result of me using paper instead of a ruler, but again, I'm okay with that. But I do wanna make sure that I'm consistent. So hopefully you can see where my foot is. I wanna make sure I clear that line right there, okay? So there we go. Same thing over here. Okay, so we've just sewn the corners. You want to make sure now that you don't have any holes on the side or the bottom. So check all of your seams to make sure there's not a hole. And now we're ready to layer these. So you're gonna take your uh, basket, you're gonna leave the front fabric uh, just like this, okay? So front fabric in there. You're gonna take the lining and you're actually gonna turn it right sides out, okay? So right sides out. And if you use a label, this is my piece of advice, don't put the opening of your lining on the same side as your label. So my label's on the right side right now. I'm gonna put this opening on the left side. That would really interfere with your label, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is put these um, together and open the seams. So I'm going to start on this one side here. Whoops. Okay, make sure I'm in the camera view. And I'm going to use my clip. And then I'm going to go over to the other side and do that side. And then we'll hope that the rest, if your sewing was consistent, they should, they should um, line up nicely. Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna clip this one. Now, for the rest of these, we're just gonna go around and do the same thing, just clip them. These clips might be a little too big uh, for your sewing machine. If they are, then you will have to um, pin them. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute when we're actually sewing. Now this basket is not a reversible basket. The one I made before uh, is because um, of how we made it, but this one is not because of that opening piece and the liner. Okay, so we're going to the sewing machine now. Okay, oops, I hit the camera. So now we're ready to start sewing. I'm just gonna start here and um, yeah. I'm just lining it up to the edge of my foot, okay?
Okay, this is how it looks. We just stitched around the entire top of it. Now, before I proceed, I'm going to cut these extra threads. I know some people don't do this step. You don't have to if you don't want to. Um, it depends on how much time I have, whether I trim them or not. But okay, so that's pretty good. Now, we want to turn this right side out. So we're gonna look for that little hole that we left. Um, here it is right here. Okay, so we're just gonna slowly push that through. This basket is actually going to be for me, so I am so excited. Okay, so now I'm going to take my hand inside the bottom, press these points out, and then same thing on this side. Okay, so here's how it looks. Look how pretty. That's the front, that's the back, or this is the front, that's the back it's either it doesn't matter okay so now we have this little opening that we have to close that's inside so this is where I was talking about um, this basket is not reversible because of this unless you're one of those perfect sewers <laughs> I still haven't figured out what that trick is to make this look so fabulous I'm okay with this basket not being uh, reversible so now all we're going to do is sew this up so I'm going to start here and end oh, right about there where that white thread is. This time I'm going to be lining up the edge of the fabric to the inside of this presser foot, okay? Okay, so we've just sewn that closed. Doesn't look the best, does it? That's why it's the liner. Uh, you could use the same color thread and that would um, make it less noticeable. I'm okay with it, looking that like that, okay? So now what we're gonna do is push the liner inside there, just like that. And then we're going to fold, not fold, we're going to flatten that out and I'm actually gonna use pins because on my machine, uh, these little clips are getting caught. Um, so I have to use pins for this step. So I'm making sure that the lining is, is inside there and it doesn't have any ripples or whatever. And I'm just gonna pin. And I'm gonna go around the entire thing and then what we're gonna do is stitch around the entire basket. I should get my pins closer, right? Let's see. Okay, now we're gonna go to the sewing machine. Okay, so it doesn't matter where you stitch or where you line this up, you can line it up to the outside of your presser foot or the inside or your quarter inch, whatever you want, just be consistent across the entire thing. Um, I think I'm just gonna go use the outside of the foot, okay? Okay, so we've just stitched around the top. Now what we're gonna do is take our scissors and snip all these extra threads. And while I do that, we're gonna talk about the previous fabric basket that I made. Uh, that one was reversible. Uh, if you had, if you used one piece of fabric and there was reindeer or deer on there, 
the back side of the deer would be upside down. So that's the benefit of using this video um, so that you can use two pieces of fabric so that your animals or your pattern is right side up. You know what I mean? Okay, so now the final step is we are going to press this because you can see it's quite wrinkly. Okay, so here's my ironing boards. I've got this little mini one. These came together. I did get them on Amazon. If they're still available, I'll make sure that the link is on my website and um, on my web, um, under the description of the video, okay? So you're just gonna press this around the entire basket. Okay, so here's how it looks. Pretty darn cute, right? Okay, that wraps up this video. All of the supplies that I used in my video will be listed in the description under the video and also on my website along with the free PDF. Okay, thanks a lot. Have a great day.